I still love an old-fashioned library where information meets inspiration and the inquisitive mind can find nourishment and the seeds of creativity and scientific discovery. The Harry Elkins Widener Library at Harvard University, with its 10 levels and three and a half million volumes, is endlessly stimulating. But my favorite lies on the other side of the Atlantic. While I was attending a conference at the Royal Society in London, my colleague and friend Sir Mike Brady arranged a tour of the Society's library for several of us attendees. This library houses some of the most extraordinary handwritten gems in the history of science. Isaac Newton's manuscripts, including drafts and notes related to his groundbreaking work in mathematics, physics, and astronomy. Charles Darwin's early ruminations on his theory of evolution by natural selection. Edmund Halley's handwritten memoranda regarding his astronomical observations. The observations of Captain James Cook, letters from Albert Einstein, Michael Faraday, and other prominent scientists and an essay towards solving a problem in the doctrine of chances by Thomas Bayes. This last one might not sound quite on par with Newton or Darwin, but as the founding father of probability theory, Bayes is something of an intellectual rock star for computer scientists. The archivist even brought out a first edition of Newton's Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, in which the famed scientist and mathematician introduced his version of the calculus. This was a singular experience. Yet, there is one other library I've always longed to visit, and unless one of our MIT students has an unexpected breakthrough with time travel or builds its virtual digital twin, I don't expect to get the chance. I would like to explore the Great Library of Alexandria, the central repository of human knowledge in the ancient world. Naturally, it would be inspiring to stroll through this institution, immersing myself among the works and scrolls crafted by some of history's greatest minds. I'd like to study a manuscript or two and engage with the scholars of the time. Yet, I'd also like to visit for a very particular reason. I'm very curious about how they organized all that knowledge. Neither the card catalog nor the Dewey Decimal System had been invented. How were the scrolls arranged and stored? Who was allowed to read them? And how did one go about requesting access? I'd like to imagine there was an all-knowing librarian who could tell you exactly where every single scroll was located, precisely what it contained, and perhaps even synthesize the contents for you succinctly.